I'm here at my makerspace and like many makerspaces across the country and the world, I should say, we're making face shields. And the model we decided to go with is a 3D Verkscan model, just because of how quickly you can crank these out. It's a very um, efficient, uh, very quick print, and especially if you can stack them. So let me show you, um, I got a little five stack going here that we did. And that way you can, you know, let your printer go and come back to about 20 of these ready to go and just pop them out and assemble them. Now, uh, stacking is easy if you have one printer, but we've got three different printers, all three different models. And it gets to be more of a challenge because the problem is you have to get that little gap right. So if you see these, there's a little gap in between each layer to allow you to come out and just like pop these out. And if you get the gap right, they can come apart really easily. Um, but, you know, printers aren't all the same and they all have different tolerances. So they all work differently. So what works for the Prusa is not going to work for our Ultimaker. And that's the challenge I'm having right now. So I'll show you our little setup we have here. Uh, we've got our Prusa going. That's our Prusa Mark II there. And then that's our CR10. We've got a model there that just finished. And then we have our Ultimaker 2 Plus here and a model that just finished there as well. So, like I said, we're, we're oh, well, I'm trying to figure out the uh, um, distance, the little gap distance for each printer. And almost got it, I'm just running a few more tests. But I'll show you some of the ones that didn't work. You can see here, this one here, we've got a bit of a fail there. Uh, more of a fail on this one over here. And we won't even talk about what happened over there. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's a work in progress. I've been here all day um, trying to get these going and, and getting it figured out because I pretty much got an army of members out there uh, ready to just start cranking these out. Um, a lot of our members also have 3D printers at their homes. And so that way we've got uh, a system worked out where they can print it at their houses and then drop, drop them off here. And then we can start getting them out to local organizations that need them. So uh, that's where we are. That's what we're doing here at the Makers Guild here in Norwalk, Connecticut. And uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Now, to be honest, I've been reluctant to embrace this route because 3D printing is a slow process when you're talking about mass production and we want to talk about ways we can be really the most effective here um, so i've been reluctant until recently when i saw that you can actually stack these face shields and take advantage of the vertical real estate of your 3d printer um, so i was recently looking at this and saw how i could take this particular model here by a 3d verkstan and this one was one that I saw had the potential to stack it. Okay, this is me from the future coming back with just a quick interruption for an update. Between the time of me actually recording this video and getting it out, I saw that 3D Verkscan actually now includes a stacked model of this that you can download. So I haven't yet downloaded it yet, but I will play around with it and see how it compares to the model I'm gonna show you today that I make. And Joel Telling actually created a video showing this exact model uh, being field tested by a nurse. And and I'll leave the link below and you can see her reviews on it. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled program. So I brought it into Fusion 360 and played around with it a bit and just ran, you know, a whole bunch of prints here to just try to figure this out and did a lot of testing. I eventually got it to work and I wanted to share that with you guys. So let me show you exactly what I did. Now, the way I'm accomplishing this is by downloading the STL file, so the model that's already been created, and I'm bringing it into Fusion 360 to do some minor tweaks to it in order to optimize it for uh, stackability, and then actually copying and pasting it using um, just the right tolerance I found, the right distance, which is a gap in between the layers. And if you get this gap right, you can actually allow it so that it sticks to the part below it and uh, the print doesn't fail. It's able to actually stick. But if you get just the right gap in there, you're able to get a very weak bond so that you can just come in with like a pair of uh, flathead screwdriver, for example, and just pop these uh, layers out as I'm doing here. So there was quite a bit of testing with what that right gap needs to be the distance for that gap. So I'll show you my method here and we're going to start by bringing the model into Fusion 360. 
So we'll open up a new design here and I'm going to go to insert and then down to insert mesh. And I'm going to grab the STL file here. This is the three hole punch version. So there's three slots and you can use a regular uh, US three hole punch to make these holes. And OK, so let's talk about this process. When you bring in a STL file into Fusion 360 using this method, you really can't do much with it. You can pretty much rotate and look around. And what we have to do is convert this mesh into a B-Rep. So to do that, you first have to go up here in your browser, click on the very topmost item here, and it'll be the name of your model or unsaved, it'll say, if you don't have it saved yet. You're going to right click and go down to Do Not Capture Design History. Click OK here. It's going to tell you that you're going to lose your timeline. And we're going to say continue. And as you notice, we did lose our timeline. But what you can do now is you can right click on the model and you'll have this option available that says mesh to B wrap. We're going to click on that and it's going to give you this option here. We'll click OK. And it, as you can see, it's going to form a new body. And now we see something completely different. We have a solid body here that we can, you know, manipulate. Now at this point, uh, what I would do is I'll go back and then turn my design history back on. And that's going to give me access to my timeline. So the only reason to turn it off is because we don't have that option to convert the mesh to B-Wrap unless we actually turn it off. But then we can turn it back on. All right, now that we're here, we have a solid. I'll show you a few tips here. You see all these triangles? You know, these, they really make the models hard to work with because it's just a lot of data there. And we can simplify this a bit. For any flat surface, you can usually go on and just click on any one of those triangles and hit delete. And what Fusion will do is it'll figure out that this is all flat. We don't need all those triangles. So it'll actually just clean it up and delete them all. And we'll do the same thing for this surface here because that's also flat. And then I'll go ahead and do the bottom. I'll just grab any one of those triangles and delete. Now this will only work for flat surfaces. So um, let's try it here. Let's see if this works. Yep, that works too. Um, all right, so now that we have you know, this cleaned up a bit, I um, experimented with this and realized that you know, this portion here, um, when I try to stack this, it's going to be a problem because it's going to try to bridge. The next uh, model on top here is going to want to bridge this. And that doesn't always work out really well. So I'm going to modify this by taking this surface and extruding it to the top. So I'm going to hit E for extrude. I'm going to go to... Um, extent here. I'm going to change this from distance to two object. I'm going to select the top surface here as my object. And Fusion is going to be a little bit slow here because of all these triangles. But uh, once I do that, I'm going to change the operation from cut to join and then click OK. All right, so now this surface is flat here. I don't have that pocket in there. OK, next what I did is I'm going to take this body and copy it. So I'm not going to do it here by selecting this model here. I'm actually going to go up here, click on my body, right click, and I'm going to go to move slash copy. That gives me this little widget here. Now notice it's at the bottom right, and that's important because we're going to have to enter the distance of how far we want to move it. Now that distance, I'm going to hit escape um, for a minute to back up and show you um, uh, how I figured out the distance. So I'm going to hit the inspect, the measuring tool here, and I'm going to inspect the, diff the distance between the bottom surface here and the top surface. And that's going to tell me that that's five millimeters. So, okay, now that I have that information, let's go back to bodies here and I'm going to go to move slash copy. And let's go to a uh, straight view here. And I can see that, okay, this is placed right at that bottom corner. Now, I want to move it and the gap that I um, that I found out worked perfectly is 0 0.35 millimeters. And I got this by first trying, I think I tried a 0 0.5 and then I uh, went to 0 0.4. It was just too big and it didn't work. Uh, it gave me like gaps in between the prints that um, you know just didn't work out as you can see in this model here. And then I went to 0 0.4, that didn't work. And I tried 0 0.3 and it was just a little too tight. And then finally 0 0.35. And, and that's how these things work. So, okay, so I'm gonna do my distance here. I'm gonna set it as five, which is gonna give me the full distance of this model. Whoops. All right, I'm gonna redo that because there's something I forgot to do and I always forget to do it. And you'll probably forget to do it too. 
So let's go back, right click, move copy. You have to click this create copy button first, otherwise you have to start over. So we're gonna create copy. You can take this arrow and you can see you can start dragging it up. Now for my distance, I'm gonna do my five plus my 0.35, so 5.35 and hit enter. Okay, now when I zoom in, you'll see I have a little gap in there. And that's perfect. Like I said, it's, it's just enough where it allows it to bond, but it creates a weak bond and you can just come in and snap them apart. And so you basically keep doing that. I would just, um, you know, select this and this, right click. I don't need this one in the middle. In fact, what I would do is just take this mesh and just delete it. And now I'll have just my two bodies here. And I'll keep copying them on top of each other, making sure I have that 0 0.35 millimeter gap, you know, by doing the same process. You can do a rectangular pattern here by going to rectangular pattern, but I'll give you a heads up that it just takes a really long time with Fusion trying to make these calculations uh, with this type of model. So I found a quicker way to go is just to continue copying these on top. So you'll create as many as you want. And I'm going to go here to uh, one that I made, which I actually have this 30 stack. And then you can 3D print this uh, by bringing it into your slicer. And if you wanted to print all of these, all you would do is right click all the way up here again on the very top of your browser and you would go to save as STL. Now let's say you only wanted to print 10 of them. Well, you would just untoggle the visibility of the 10 that you, um, or 20 that you didn't want and you would just leave what you wanted. And when you go to right click and you go to export as, a, or I'm sorry, save as STL, it'll only bring over what you have visible here. So let's do that. I'll just leave um, however many I have right here toggled on. And I'm going to right click and go to save as STL file. Make sure this is not checked here. Well, you can have it checked and it'll send it straight to your 3D print utility, but I want to save as an actual STL file to have in a folder. So what I'm going to do is just click OK. It's going to um, ask me um, to go ahead and save it and give it a name. So in this case, i um, not sure how many I have there, but let's say I have like 25, maybe I'll say my 25 stack is what I'll name this, um, and then I'll save it. Okay, now I can go into Cura and I'll just click on my folder here and I'll bring in my model. And here it is. So you can see the mall stack there. I'll briefly talk about my settings here and how uh, I'm printing this. So normally uh, the line width here, I believe is 0 0.4 and I'm going with a uh, 0.3 millimeter um, height. And let me change, let's see, my wall, number of walls, shells, I usually have that set to two. I'm just gonna slice it like that for now just to show you how the settings uh, get affected here. Now, let's go to preview. And let's bring this slider all the way down. We'll just go to that first layer there. Okay, let's zoom in a bit. Now, the whole purpose of this design is, is that if you read information on 3D Verkscan, Basically what they were trying to do is to avoid having any infill so that you can print this whole thing with just shells. And that was the whole reason I believe for having that pocket here to, was to accomplish that. Uh, but anyway, for me, I found it was more important to have that stackability. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and compromise that. But I wanna focus here to just show you a feature that you can take advantage here. So we're gonna go up here and I'm gonna change that line width to 0.5. And what that's going to do is just make that outer shell, those, uh, those outer walls, a little bit thicker. So let's slice that. Hard, you can't really tell. But anyway, these outer walls are a little bit thicker. And now we can go to our shells. And let me show you what happens when I go to three. So I have a wall line count of two. And you can see here I have one, two shells and one, two here with some infill there, 20% uh, infill. But I'm going to change it to three. And let's go ahead and re-slice. Okay, now you see I have three walls on this side, three walls on this side with a little bit of infill room in the middle. And I'm gonna go one more, now I'm gonna go to four and then slice it again. And now you can see there's no infill at all because we have four walls on this side and then four walls on the inner side and there's just no room left for 
infill. So that's a trick you can do when you have a thin wall and you don't want any infill, you know, and in some cases you can take advantage of this and it'll allow it to basically having a hundred percent infill here, you know, without really having any infill. So in some cases you can get away with speeding up your prints um, by taking advantage of that property. Now this part here, we do have our infill layer as you see. So, okay, so now we can bring this up and you can see all our different layers. And I'm gonna go to a straight view to kind of really show you what's happening here. So notice what happens here. If I click on this little uh, button right here on the slider and then I can use my arrow keys to go up and down. So I've got, you can see I can click and each time I click on the up arrow, it goes one layer. But then I get this gap right here. I clicked and nothing happened and then I get another layer going up and then it starts. So that gap here is what's what's important to give you um, the setting there to allow these to be able to um, just pop off. So th this is really exciting because uh, I've never really took advantage of this property. What got me interested in actually experimenting with this was that two years ago I did this video on how to design a working slinky. And it's the same principle there. What you do is you allow some enough spacing between the coils so that the printer ends up creating a weak bond, you know, um, where the, the filament still fuses, but it's so weak that you can just go in and basically just tear apart the, the bonds there and allow it to, to work. So because I had done that model in the past, it, it got me thinking about, well, what if you try that same principle and will you be able to stack these, these headbands just like that? And it, it actually worked. So, all right, so just a quick video I wanted to throw together to show you how to take advantage of this principle. And you can do it with any model. It doesn't have to be this one in particularly. Well, I won't say any model because you have to be careful of bridging. So uh, there's still regular 3D printing principles you have to be careful with. But, uh, you know, just I find this a very powerful technique, especially having the option to bring an STL file into Fusion 360, uh, being able to tweak it and re-exporting it, uh, giving it that gap that you need. Now you'll want to test this out. So what I recommend doing is just um, printing two models, one on top of the other with the right gap. You know, start with 0.35 and seeing if you're able to, you know, break them apart. Now you want to use like a flathead screwdriver or a putty knife. I would stay away from using a razor or a box cutter um, just because if it slips, this is not the time you want to be going to the emergency room for stitches. So like I said, you want to test it. If it doesn't work, then I would start, you know, either incrementing or, or decreasing that gap by, you know, probably 0 0.05 increments until you get it right. And once you get it right, you can stack these as high as you want. All right, guys, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. I will keep you posted on any new developments uh, we make and and let you know how our space is, is coming along with making these face shields.